Hi, welcome. Today we will talk about the Finland's legend. I'm talking about Aiki Vesterinen. So this guy has made one, in my opinion, one of the best games that's ever been played. So I'm talking about the game between him playing with Black and Samuel Hrashevsky. A little bit about Hrashevsky. Hrashevsky uh, is a legend on US and yes, international too. But at US he has beaten several records, he has won several US championships. Uh, so this guy was a real deal too. So let's jump to our game. But before that, did you know that almost 87% isn't subscribed? It's true, 87%. I don't know, why don't you like me? I'm a great person, I want to help you. This content is just for you, everything. And every day I put a new video just to help you reach your peak. So to help me, it's quite easy and free. You just need to subscribe, Push the notifications on. If you enjoyed the content, please like and comment. You can always put something on the comments below. And if you have critics, you can talk with me on the comments or even at chess.com. So my nickname is uh, Dark Underline Attack and I always answer. So please tell me something if you're enjoying or if you aren't enjoying uh, because I, I like to, to talk with, with you, so let's jump to our video. So, about uh, Vesterin, and let's talk a little bit about him. So, Vesterin, and uh, his name is Aiki Marcus Julius Vesterin, and he was born at Helsinki at 1944, and at 1975 he was the first Grandmaster of Finland. About his results, he has been Finnish uh, champion by four times and he has played at uh, uh, the Olympiads and um, his peak rating was 24.85 in January of 1976. About his style, he was he, and he is a tactical player, he, he does brilliant combinations and currently he has 79 years old <clears throat> and he continues competing. Uh, of course, his rating isn't uh, at his peak, but he is still a very strong player with 22-35 of rating. Uh, if you jump to the lists of the um, feed, uh, I'm going to put here, uh, you can see him because uh, I, I'm going to put all players and then we are going to see the active players because I, I had this curiosity how many grandmasters exist at Finland so we have one two this guy is quite strong almost uh, 2600 so one two then we have another here Vesterinen 84 and I think four yeah number 40 so for grandmasters, but the thing is that we are seeing all. If you put active players, you're going to see Vesterinen because he continues to compete. So, one grandmaster, we have here Vesterinen, two and three. So, looking at uh, Vesterinen, uh, this is important. And, and I want to show you because for me, this guy is an example. He makes games a lot. He, he, he is always competing. Look at this. Uh, October, November, December. Rest, February, March, rest, May. So, of course, he is dropping the rating, but this isn't the most important thing. The most important thing is, the, is that this guy is giving all he have to chess. And those guys are the real legends, because those guys make a lot to help this modality to improve. So chess is improving because of guys like Heike Vesterinen. So let's go to our game. So this game has been played a few years uh, ago and um, uh, he was playing with Black against a uh, legend. So Hrashevsky was very strong. And this has been played at um, the Soviet um, uh, and uh, the game has been uh, played at 1989. 
uh, on the World Cup Open. So let's go. Uh, uh, one detail about Samuel Rashevsky. Rashevsky was American, but later, I think in 1922, I think, he has uh, changed to um, Poland. So he achieved a second nationality. So he was Polish too later. So let's go to the game. And uh, looking to this game, uh, this was a high pressure game. So Heike Vesterin on those days was at his peak and he was the number, I think, 100 of the world. He wasn't the top uh, at the top, but he was pretty strong and he wanted to prove his value. So this starts with C4, this is the English open, uh, opening, sorry. And after E5, it's uh, the, the, my uh, favorite because approach because uh, we want to uh, play dynamic positions. And if you play asymmetric positions, you will achieve easier uh, aggressive games. And of course, the most passive ones and are the symmetric. They are playable too, but I, I don't like very much. So E5 and after knight C3, uh, F5. This is, <laughs> I, I, I like a lot this kind of play because this is a reversed uh, Sicilian. And well, when we play this, we are trying to attack and create problems and this will happen in this game because Vesterin will give a, a real um, massacre uh, to Rashevsky. So here uh, White has continued with g3, no problem at all. And after uh, knight to f6, bishop g2, bishop b4 is already an interesting idea because well here Normally, uh, everyone plays knight c6. Uh, um, bishop b4 is playable too, but it's more common uh, d6, bishop e7, uh, those quiet moves. But when he play this, this is an aggressive answer for black. So white needs to think a little bit about what will he do. And here, the most common continuation is queen to c2, uh, but he hasn't played that. He has played uh, another variant, I think is playable too, is queen to b3. Uh, the, the idea of queen c2 is to try to play on the queen side, uh, because the bishop is already on fianchetto and uh, he will try to create problems on, on that side of the board. But after that, probably I think he was thinking about to create, oops, sorry, uh, to create pressure on b7 pawn, because after bishop goes somewhere, he, he was threatening to take the pawn, but I don't know, it's, it's strange. And, um, okay, here, black has played uh, in a way that I, I enjoy a lot, because uh, c5 tries to prevent counterplay on the center, and he's protecting the bishop. Of course, he, probably you're thinking about uh, of the square on d5. Oh, d5 is a problem, is a hole. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if, if this is a, a problem, a real problem, because after knight jumps, we can always take with our knight. Um, and okay, pawn takes d6, bishop, I don't know. Uh, and even you can castle. I'm not seeing um, problems with that. So after a3, here Vesterinen Vesterin has taken the knight uh, because he doesn't want to lose tempos. And the knight could jump to d. And after queen takes to prevent breaking the pawn structure, here he will continue with queen e7. Very interesting, this idea. The most normal approach is just to play uh, knight c7, uh, c6, sorry, because you are threatening to enter, not now, but it's an idea to enter on d4, and uh, you're protecting to the pawn that is being attacked by the queen, and um, okay, it's normal, even d6 is normal, but the thing is that white can continue with this kind of approaches too. So when he plays queen to e7, the thing is that this queen is already on the same file as the king. 
And this will lead to a completely devastating attack for black. And this is interesting because grandmasters think like that. He is already thinking at long term uh, the advantages. So this is very important. Uh, here, white has continued with B4. Uh, B4 is interesting, is probably a correct approach too, but the thing is that, okay, after B4, we can uh, continue with knight C6. And okay, here white has played B5, probably pawn takes, queen takes, and with E3 or D3 probably could be ideas, but here white has advanced the pawn. And this is the first moment that I want you, I want you to put this video on pause, because I want you to think, what would you play here? Because Hrashevsky was quite a strong player, and probably he thinks that after B5, knight to d4 wasn't a possible move because knight to d4 pawn advances and well knight to e6 you're going to lose a pawn it's it doesn't have good looks but the thing is that Vesserinen has played that and to do that you need to calculate pretty well so this continued with e3 and now incredible d6 and this works we don't need to put our knights elsewhere the knight is perfect perfect at this square because after pawn takes pawn takes this is a check and we are going to win the queen so Yehashevsky can't take the knight so here he has played bishop but look bishop to b2 isn't a good square because the diagonal is closed so for black everything is well so here he continued with castle because the knight cannot be taken because we win always the queen so very interesting approach by Vesterinen so this continued with <laughs> castle queen side and of course this doesn't have a good look because the king is exposed, he has advanced a lot, the pawns. So, for me, this is already an easier position for black. Because we don't have problems of development, uh, our king is secure, we have the center, and we are controlling important uh, squares. So, and about the mobility too, because we have more mobility than uh, white. So, here... Vesserinen has continued with knight e4. Brilliant idea. And he is already thinking about another advantage. So he has the center because of the knight on d4. And now he is threatening to play knight to f2. So, my god, what can white do? Here, Hrashevsky has taken. He, he couldn't do anything else. So after pawn takes, the rook is attacking f2. And the thing is, this knight cannot play anywhere. So here, of course, to prevent the loss of the pawn, Hrashevsky has made a pretty ugly move. Rook to f1. And this game is already lost for white. Because here... <laughs> Vesterinen will do a tactical move that if you like chess, you're going to cry because this is so pretty. Put on pause, please, please, and think a little bit about the next move. It's so pretty, this idea. Have you seen? He has played Bishop H3. My god, what is that? The idea is quite simple. If knight takes, we are going to give check and win the queen. So he has seen the, that the knight was the only defender of the square on e2. 
So you want to distract the only defender. At the same time, you're attacking the rook and you're threatening to play bishop g2, winning the other rook. Everything on white's game is broken, completely broken. And this game is completely won for Aiki Vesterin, the Finnish legend. So, of course, Kashevsky hasn't resigned yet. So, he continued with rook to e1. And of course, here everything works, you can take with the rook, but yeah, bishop g2 is better and is prettier. Because we are going to win a quality. So, after pawn takes, let's take this knight. This knight is a monster. Pawn takes, we have a very, very powerful center. And now, the, king, the queen is being attacked. So, queen to c2, he will continue with rook takes f2. So, right now, Hashevsky is winning by one pawn, but... Yeah, we already know that this rook will fall. So black is one. So this continued with knight to h3 uh, uh, because, well, it's necessary. Because, for example, if rook takes, of course, rook check and the queen will fall. So <laughs> it's a shame. And this continued with, uh, of course, uh, uh, another idea, of course, is if queen takes, queen takes, rook takes, and yeah, we take this and we will take the other piece too. So <laughs> he cannot do nothing. So here he has played knight to h3, and after bishop takes knight, this is better uh, because here we win three points and here we win two points, okay? So uh, bishop takes knight, and after rook takes, here, he will continue with queen f7 to uh, continue creating problems. This is an idea, and this is another idea too, because we will attack uh, at the same time the two rooks. So, this continued with rook, rook takes, g takes, and now queen takes. And right now, we are winning by two full points. This continued with queen, and this game is already finishing, because bishop attacks queen, Queen to e2, and after queen e4, we are threatening to give checkmate, we are threatening to take the rook, and of course, here, Hashevsky has resigned because uh, it was necessary to exchange the queen. So, a brilliant game, a brilliant miniature by Heike Vesterinen that has won with violence Samuel Hashevsky. Uh, a legend of US. So I, I hope you enjoyed this video. So uh, I like to talk about different persons and I want, uh, I want to inspire uh, everyone uh, with those guys. And I'm really, uh, I, I'm talking serious when I say that Aiki Vesterinen, in my opinion, is uh, a legend and we need to talk about those players if you know on your country a player like Aiki Vesterinen that you think deserved to be talked here please tell me put on the comments because uh, I of course I don't know the reality of all countries but I want to find inspirations inspiration in those players and i'm pretty happy to know that this guy uh, is still playing with almost 80 years old so for today is all i hope you enjoyed don't forget like subscribe uh, do everything talk with me and tomorrow uh, we will be here at the same hour have a good day until tomorrow bye bye <laughs>